What you think is a private conversation or text may not be private at all. Just ask Tiger Woods. His infidelity became public in part through text messages. So how do we guard our privacy in this age of technology? Well, here with some insight is the author of Ultimate Betrayal. She's also a criminal investigator. Welcome back, Deneen Manette. Good Hi, to see you. Thank you. Happy holidays thank to you. Thank you. You too. You know, Obviously, celebrities have to worry about their privacy being yes. invaded. But in this age of technology, even private, everyday citizens have, have to be concerned, right? Absolutely. Yes, they do. Um, it depends on where you are and what you're doing. But in the workplace, in your private communications and things that during doing things that you typically believe are private and that people don't have access to, that's just not the case. Well, now, if we delete our voicemail messages and delete our texts, w wouldn't that protect us? No, nothing's ever really deleted. Some things go back from the beginning of time, from the beginning of when text messages begin to be recorded. So some things are just there. There's nothing you can do about it, who, even if you delete it on your device. Who can retrieve this kind of information when we think it's gone? All sorts of people. Um, from a legal aspect, government entities have a right to go in there and with the right um, legal papers, with uh, subpoenas or court orders, they can get information regarding cell phone usage and text message content and internet uh, email usage content and private individuals who can go about getting this information illegally, but they can get it. Now, see, that's the scary part to me. I, I know government investigative bodies can access this information, but the, the thought that private individuals with criminal intent mm -hmm. can steal my or access my private information is really scary. I, I mean, the technology is out there and, and anybody can get a hold of that kind of technology to do this invasion? Of Pretty much. Problems? There's lots of ways that people can go about getting this information. You can look online and see numerous people and numerous organizations that are available and offer this service for a fee that they say they can go in and get um, people's histories, they can get criminal records, they can get cell phones and phone bills information they can get all of this stuff for you for a fee um, and they can obtain this information now I we're going to get to ways we can protect ourselves in a minute but first let's talk about spouses who are suspicious or who are just uh -huh. upset what to what extent you're an investigator to yes. what extent do spouses go to get information on the one they feel has betrayed them they go until they find what they want to f what they're looking for um, there are so many different ways that people can get information for you know wanting if there's infidelity in their relationship or cheating going on there are online sites and, and things that are available there's so much spyware there's cell phone forensics which is how you can get information off of sim cards any anything that you want to know about and when you're trying to investigate infidelity in your relationship is available to okay. you so if we have stuff going on in our lives, whether it's just ordinary everyday stuff mm -hmm. or stuff we really want to hide, what can we do to protect ourselves? Well, there's not a lot that you can do because this new age of voyeuristic technology is out there. People can get information, they can get access to the information that you believe to be private. Mm -hmm. So basically it pretty much comes down to not sending text messages that could come back to harm you or come back to bite you in the end. Right. It's being really careful about the things you put out there on, on the internet and in your emails and text messaging and this new thing the teenagers are doing called sexting where they're sending these oh. nude photographs of yeah. themselves. You just can't do these things if you're worried about someone getting a hold of it on the other side. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are obviously some common sense things like we should teach our kids the uh, the dangers of putting their private information out there on social networking sites. Correct. But you're talking about just not texting about personal things, not leaving voicemail messages about personal things. If you don't reach the person directly, then wait until you do reach that person to talk about the private stuff, right? That's right. You just need to assume that the information that you're sending in a text message can be accessed by somebody else at some other point in time. And especially if you're using work cell phones or work com uh, issued computers and things of that nature, mm -hmm. you have to be really cautious because people have access to this information and, and most employees know going in that their employer can check their cell phone records and check their computer history at any time. It, it, as long as they have a reasonable, a, a reason for checking into yeah. your, your calls that That's you do right. with your employer. That's right. Now, is there anything going on in the legal arena that might offer some kind of protection or some limitation on access to our private information? Well, at this time, the technology is advancing quicker than the law can keep up. Mm. But the Supreme Court did agree just this week to take on a case um, that's coming out of Southern California in which an employee, a, a group of employees believe that their communications on their company-issued cell phones were being kept private. Yeah. And apparently that wasn't the case. So the Supreme Court did agree to just hear that. And although the laws are evolving, we're still, you know, we're, we're waiting to find out what's going to happen 
but right now it's kind of a gray area. Yeah, you, you talk about the technological advances moving so fast that the law can't keep law up with can't them. Law can't keep up. It's, yeah, it's sort of like the horse is out of the barn already. Once that technology is there and available, it's kind of hard to restrict its use or, you know, and it keeps it growing back. and changing, and, yeah. and there's you know, things that used to be okay to access, now they're starting to put more restrictions on. And we have state law and we have federal law, and these things are often in conflict with one another. So it's, it's really difficult to try and keep up legally when technology is advancing so quickly. So I guess the best advice then is to be, be careful, be prudent, be discreet. Don't put information in text form, That's right. or voicemail form, or any place on the internet if you don't. If you fear That's that, right. And be careful about you. who has information about you. For instance, I, if, if someone has your, your social security number, they can just go on to a cell phone, your cell phone site, if you haven't already set up your online account, and right. access your account and get access to your cell phone bills and things of that nature. So you need to make sure that you have control of that information. Kind of scary, but information we need to hear. Deneen Manette, thank you so much. Thank you. All of this information, all these tips can be found on our website, so check it out. Happy holidays to you. Thank Good you. To see you, you too. Thank okay. You.